What's going on guys? Today we're going to show you how to make two of our favorite appetizers and we're at one of our go-to places for the holiday season, Aldi, because their stuff is super affordable and it's great for hosting a ton of people. And then a big shout out to Aldi. This video is sponsored by them. We really appreciate it. So let's head inside and grab the goods. First appetizer, prosciutto brie cups. So it's a ring of prosciutto, brie cheese in the middle, and then a topping. The toppings could be any kind of fruit. I like going fruit. You can also go with some nuts. We're gonna make both variations for you today. So they do have pretty good selection here. I personally like to go with raspberries. I think that's the best topper for this. You can also go, we got a little Aldi saver going on right now, blueberries. A little more sourness of the raspberries is what makes it a better choice. So we're gonna grab a little container of raspberries. All right guys, so the next topping we're gonna grab are some pecans. So this is my personal favorite. I like the crunch and the saltiness of the nut mixed with the saltiness of the prosciutto and the brie. So we're gonna grab some pecan halves right here. So definitely do the nuts and the berries. You can't go wrong. If you guys have ever bought prosciutto before, you'll know that it does tend to break the bank. But look at this affordable quality prosciutto right here, 275. This is four ounces. You're probably gonna want, depending on how many you wanna make, each slice of prosciutto makes two cups. So factor that in. In here, there's about eight slices. We probably wanna make like 30, at least 30. So we're gonna get two packs. Okay, and then last ingredient. This is super simple. Three or four ingredients for this entire thing. You can't mess it up. If you don't know how to cook, make this appetizer. Everyone will be amazed. So the last ingredient is brie cheese. And the reason for that is it's soft, but it also like holds its form when it bakes, as opposed to using like cheddar cheese or some other kind of cheese, it just like completely melts. You don't really want that. You want it to hold its form a little bit for this appetizer. One wheel should do it. Another cool thing about uh, brie cheese is that it is one of the higher fat cheeses. It's two to one fat to protein ratio. Whereas most cheeses are more equal, it could be like a one-to-one -one ratio. For our favorite appetizer, this is all you need. And you don't even need both of these, you just need one. That's how you simplify your shopping list for the holidays. Now we're gonna move on to the second one, which is easier, but not quite as creative. It's a charcuterie board, or as Mega says. A charcuterie board, but it's actually meat and cheese, because char charcuterie is just meat, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I'm mixed up, but we're going to go with meat and cheese board. We're already in the meat and cheese area. Convenient. Let's get to picking out our meat and cheeses. They have a ton of great selection here. So anything we really want for the meat and cheese board. I think this is like a necessary of any holiday party or gathering. And I'm obsessed with cheese. I'm a cheese monger, as you would say. So I'm gonna pick out the cheeses for you guys and you wanna change up the flavor. So we're gonna have a little fun here. One of my favorite cheeses is goat's milk cheese. It's just like a softer texture, a different flavor. And like, it's also easier on the, on the digestion, goat's milk versus cow's milk. We're gonna go with this mini ash brie cheese because it has a vegetable ash on it, which sounds really good. And it's gonna really change up the flavors and it's mini, I love everything mini. So we're gonna get, definitely get this. We don't just want like a ton of the same types of cheeses. So we're definitely gonna to hit up a gouda scorpion pepper gouda cheese that sounds really good and then i like to have three to four cheeses at least this cranberry white cheddar cheese sounds really good but you're like cranberry that's not low carb but one serving so that's an ounce is two carbs so that's not bad at all and it's definitely going to change up the flavor profile very very festive so i think this will be fun to add to the cheese board and then we're just going to go really simple with a nice cheddar and parmesan cheese. A couple other great options they do have here. We're not gonna grab, but I would recommend because you definitely want to like have a ton of different flavor profiles going on. That's like the best part about a cheese board. They have a, your Cajun be crazy. So they have the cute names going and then they have a coffee one, which looks super cool. Like look at that outside. That's definitely just coffee grounds, isn't it? Would you say I'm more of the meat guy? You're more of the cheese lady? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You can just tell from looking at our bodies. What I like to get is usually a lot of stores will have a selection of like a few different types of Italian meats. So like right here, classic. You got the pepper, salami, hot capacola. And I think in Italian, they don't they pronounce it like gabagul? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you get that from that word? Uh, and then calabrese. So yeah, there's usually one that's kind of spicy that adds good contrast. So we're gonna grab this. Also, since there is no prosciutto in here, I'm also gonna grab yet another thing of prosciutto for the tray. So then we got four types of meats. That's pretty good. Another thing they have, if you don't wanna go so extreme with like five types of cheeses like Mega did, they have this, which is pretty solid too. It's panino fingers, which is just like cheese meat wrapped around it. You can also make these homemade at home too. All right guys, so another necessary for 
a quality meat and cheese board is some stuffed olives, in my opinion. So I don't like olives on their own, but if it's stuffed with something like blue cheese or garlic, I'm gonna eat it. So an olive to me is just a vehicle for something delicious inside. So they actually have a couple different kinds here. They have olives stuffed with jalapenos, garlic, and I think I see, oh, I do see it. Oh my gosh. I just had a panic attack. Being a mom just like, just shakes you. And then they have blue cheese. So I'm actually gonna go for the blue cheese. What would you get? I would get garlic, but I like mine unstuffed. We're gonna grab two of these, obviously. So the last necessary component to any good meat and cheese board is definitely nuts. And you want a couple, cause you want that crunch. And what I really like about Aldi, as I'm realizing as I'm walking through is the layout. It's super easy, user-friendly, cause they have like all the signs, like look, you can just look up and you can see that nuts is right there. Compared to other grocery stores where the layout's constantly changing, where you might just not be able to find things and you want just like to get in, get out. So that's what we're here for. We're getting in and we're getting out. When I'm looking for nuts, I'm definitely looking at the oils because you don't want something like fried in peanut oil or tossed in sunflower oil. So I always like to look at the back. So there's a couple nuts that I found that are really good options. These macadamia nuts, oven roasted with sea salt. On the pricier side, normally, but they're actually, definitely affordable here and they're higher fat. So if you're having just like going ham on the turkey or you're, you know, you're gonna have carbs from desserts, you wanna get some fat in. And then we're gonna go with some pistachios because these are my favorite nuts and it's a little little uh, holiday activity. You gotta crack in. So Matt would say definitely don't get these, but I think it's fun. You're just like standing, you're talking, you're cracking, you know, you're, you have a bowl for the shells, you have a bowl for the pistachios. I think it's fun. So we're gonna grab these two to put on our meat and cheese board. We're gonna head home now and we'll show you guys how to make our two favorite appetizers. All right guys, so we're back from Aldi and we are gonna put together our first appetizer, our prosciutto brie cups. They're super quick to make. So we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees and we are going to use a mini muffin tin. You can use a big one. Let's get filling. So as Matt said, each piece of prosciutto makes two cups. So we're gonna pull all of these out. And we're gonna just slice them in half. I like how they separate each piece. Okay. And then you kind of want to like, just you can push it in and like scrunch it up, scrunch it up like that. That'll work good. Or you can do the overlap method. So you go like that and you take the other half and you just overlap it like that. That looks good to me. And they don't have to be pretty or perfect. They're going right into your mouth. So I'm gonna finish filling these up real quick and then we'll come back to slice up the cheese and put in our topping. All right, so we filled our mini muffin tin with the prosciutto. Again, not gorgeous, but they will taste really good. And so now we're gonna cut up our brie cheese and you don't need to take off the outer coating at all. We're gonna cut this up. are cut up. We're just gonna pop those puppies in. I'm doing really big pieces of cheese here. You can do smaller pieces if you want. I know Matt likes them really big though. So the brie is already good to go and we still have a little bit of extra. So you can add this to your meat and cheese board too if you have extra brie left over. So all that's left to do now is put on our toppings. For the raspberries. What happened there? Oh. No man left behind. No prosciutto left behind. There we go. We'll do every other. So you can just like plop it in, you can put it on top. So now I'm gonna do the pecan topping. And I think I left a little more cheese and prosciutto for pecans because that's my favorite. So Matt had a good point. You can also do pecan and raspberry in the same one. So you get that crunch and that sour. All right guys, that's it. Look at how easy and quick that was. So now we're just going to pop this in our oven at 350 degrees for anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. So we're gonna pop these in and then we'll be back to taste test. Okay guys, let's get going on the charcuterie board. What I like to do is assemble everything here and kind of plan the layout. We got these two bowls, these are gonna be off the board. These two bowls are gonna be on the board and then just, you know, like a cool deluge of snacks. I'm gonna start with the cheeses. Mmm, so this is the cranberry white cheddar. It smells really good. Nice and festive. I like getting at least one or two cheeses with some kind of like flavoring in them just to contrast the rest of the cheeses. My preferred method is to cut the cheese in half 
And then you're gonna place this one on the board and then cut this part into pieces. Okay, there's cheese one. Looks nice, right? Yeah. Next up, we got the Parmesan and cheddar cheese, which I don't think I've ever tried before. So I might actually break it because that looks a little cooler. And I'm not gonna put all of it out right now. This one, I'm curious what it's gonna look like because it's called like an ash goat cheese. So I think there is some sort of ash on the outside of it, although I'm not sure. So this, yeah, yeah, okay. So this gives good contrast and color to the board. And this is gonna be a lot like tangier and tart compared to the other cheeses. Goat cheese tends to be. So for this one, I don't know, do we wanna cut it? I think you let people cut this one. So I'm just gonna put it in half like that. And then lastly, we got a scorpion pepper Gouda cheese. Okay guys, the prosciutto brie cups are done. I'm gonna set these aside while I finish the charcuterie board. Another thing is you probably wanna get some kind of bread or bread sticks or even fresh baked bread just for the rest of the family. Cause this is great for being a keto option, but also most people like eating their cheese and meats with breads or crackers. So I would also get some of those if it was me. Next up is gonna be your meat. And I think you're better off putting your cheese on first just because the meat is more flexible. Another good thing to include on a charcuterie board, um, not keto friendly though, would be like some honeycomb. That really fancies it up. Or you can get some quince. I think that's what it's called, like quince paste or like dried fruit, yeah. And then the last meat we have here is prosciutto. And guys, comment below with some of your favorite holiday appetizers. What do you usually make for the family? Okay, then we got olives up next. Those in these bowls here. And then these are the blue cheese ones. And then finally, the nuts. So these are just gonna be off the board in these bowls. And pistachios. And you probably need like a little bowl for people to put shells in too. Wow, uh, this is better than I thought it would look. Here's what they look like when they come out of the oven. And it's pretty easy to just get them out. They stay together nicely. And another thing with these is you can take them to the, wherever the event is being held, wherever the party's at, if it's not at your house, and you can put like tin foil over them and bake them when you're there. Cause it only takes like eight to 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, you want to let them cool so they're easier to remove. So the cheese kind of like hardens up a little. Okay, I'm going to try one that has both raspberries and pecans. Very good. Are the pecans salted? Just the way I remember them last year when we made them. These are really great. You can't fail with making these as an appetizer. One thing to consider though is on the back of the prosciutto package, check the amount of sodium in them. And then if you're using a salted nut like the pecans are salted, the salt can add up pretty quickly and it can be like a little overpowering. You want to check on both of those components. If they're both heavily salted, that might not be a good combo. So you can get like some raw or unsalted nuts to go with it. That could be a better option. But I would go with the fruit. The fruit's the best. Raspberries, blueberries. You can even get some no sugar added like jelly or jam and put that on top. That would be really good. The carbs would add up a little bit more, but it's the holidays. And then for the charcuterie board, it doesn't take a lot of work to make something that looks very impressive like this. You know, you just get one of these. The fact that it's just a darker color, everyone's gonna think it's really fancy, right? And just know like a thing or two about them. Just be like, yeah, this one is, has like a vegetable ash coating. Okay guys, so as you can see here, you can save on all your holiday favorites with help from Aldi. So these are our two favorite holiday appetizers. The nice thing about them is they overlap in a lot of ingredients. So like simplifies your shopping list, just make things a lot easier. And this one is for sure to impress. No one will believe how easy it was to make this. I guess they probably will. It looks kind of easy now that I'm looking at it. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Happy holidays. And thanks again to Aldi for sponsoring this video. You know I don't buy new things. Do I look fresh to death? Yeah. Is it death or death? Death, I think, but you can say death.